Hey guys, it's me, Callie. Welcome back to another Dice and Deal Mixed Media Challenge. Each month, I take a deck of Mixed Media Inspiration Cards, and I'm using a deck by Kayla Givehand, and a pair of dice. I roll the dice. Based on the number rolled, we draw the corresponding amount of cards, and based on those prompts, we create an art journal page. I encourage you guys to join along with me. I'll list all the prompts at the end of the video. And I also encourage you to join me over on Facebook at the Dyson Deal Mixed Media Challenge Group. I'd love to see you there. I love to see what you guys create. And if you're interested in seeing how I did this month's project, stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Okay guys, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is roll the dice and based on the number rolled, we'll deal the cards as long as it's a four or above. Number six. Okay, I've already shuffled these good, but I'll do it one more time. And let's see what we get. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we'll go in descending order. Use a color you typically do not use. Okay, I'm going to grab my art journal and I'll pick a color I don't normally use and I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay guys, as per usual, I'm using my delusion. I'll put all links to all the supplies I use in the description box below. Um, I have prepared the page just by putting wax paper down and some masking tape, but I did not gesso this time. So sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. And our prompt is to use a color you typically do not use. Um, I decided to go with brown. It's not a color that you typically, that you don't like, it's one that you don't use. So I do like brown, but I don't use a lot of it. Um, this is just some mixed media paper. I think this was a Tim Holtz pack. It was either Tim Holtz or Graphic 45. Um, it's double-sided. And I'm going to rip it up in strips and just apply it to the page using my favorite. Uh, Deco Art Americana Decoupage. This is matte, medium, and I have some in a palette dish with a brush. And I'll just show you quickly how I'm going to do this, and then I'll finish off camera. But I'll just put a liberal amount on the page, and without much thought, I'm just going to rip some strips. I kind of like this with the letters, so let's add that down. And this paper is fairly sturdy, so you may want to, um, if that's the case with yours, just put some uh, glue on the back as well. makes it stick easier. You can also kind of spritz it with some water. Um, and I'm just going to continue uh, over the page trying not to cover the whole page, uh, which I tend to do. Alright, so I'm going to just go on and on like this, alternating, and when that's done, I'll come back and show you what it's looking like. Okay guys, here's what it looks like, and this is still wet, it's going to take a while to dry. Uh, and if you don't have anything like decoupage, you can always water down some regular glue. Um, it's not a big deal, but feel free to interpret these prompts however you'd like. You don't have to necessarily follow along with what I do. So while this dries, let's pick another prompt so we can prepare a little bit here. Let's see what we have. Write something with your non-dominant hand. 
Well, for me, that would be my left hand. And when this is dry, I'll figure out what we're going to write. Okay, guys, I really had to think a minute for what to write. I was tempted to do the lyrics to something, the George Harrison song, but I've decided to take this very literally and write the word something with my left hand. Um, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to use the, the white Sharpie marker. This is an oil-based paint pen or my gold one, but I've decided to use the gold and hopefully um, this will act as a resist to a further prompt down the road. So like I said, I am not a lefty, but let's write some and then thing. This will just show through as a highlight. <laughs> Who knows? These challenges always make me a little nervous. You never know. But that's part of the fun, right? Okay. Something. Let's make our tea a little bigger. There you have it. Okay. That's definitely something that I wouldn't have done on my own. Uh, and that was prompt number two. So let's go ahead and see what else we have in store. Number three, drip or spray watered down paint. Try dripping from different edges and in different directions. Okay, let me get some drippy paint and I'll be back. Okay, we're going to drip or spray watered down paint, and I've decided to use these Comart airbrush paints. I picked these up, I think, at the auction last year. Um, I do have an airbrush. I've never used it. I don't have a compressor. So these are nice and fluid, and I thought that it would be cool to use them. They've been sitting around, and let's see how they play. Now, I also have a spray bottle here, and I'm going to just lightly mist my page to make it even easier for the paint to run. And you can see I've put some gloves on. And let's just go in Ooh. and kind of drip this down. Let's see how they act pretty blue. Ultramarine. I like that. Spray it again a little bit just to keep it moving. Just as I was hoping that uh, gold paint is kind of the something is acting as a resist. Alright, let's try the, I have this other blue uh, this is cobalt blue. Have you guys ever done any airbrushing? I would love to um, actually learn. Just, it's not something I've ever done. This is fun. I could watch paint drip for hours. But I won't subject you guys to it. Uh, I'm only going to use these two colors. I do have uh, other colors, but I thought the blue would kind of work with the brown and the gold. Um, but I'm going to just continue adding back and forth. Let's do one more here on camera and then I'll finish up just putting some splotches and I'll let it run. So cool. 
Okay guys, I'm probably going to cover the whole entire page, knowing me. Um, I'm going to get lost in these drips, but I'll see you back here when it's nice and dry, and we'll pick another prompt. Okay, so here we are, and true to form, I covered the whole page, but you can still see all that cool paper underneath, and I think it looks pretty good. It took a while to dry, the page was really wet, but there we have it. So let's move on to the next prompt. We're halfway through. Let's see what we got. Use watercolors. Watercolor crayons, markers, sprays, gouache, and or cake or pan watercolors. Uh, okay, let me see what I'm going to use and I'll be back. Okay guys, I've decided to use my Prismacolor watercolor pencils for this prompt. And I'm only going to be using the white one. I think. Um, <laughs> we'll see. And I'm going to use it with a stencil. I have this folk art stencil with this beautiful mandala. And I'm not sure if I'm just going to do a central one or maybe offset it. Um, but for now, just to show you what I'm going to do, I'll start in the center and I have a little bit of masking tape. And I'm just going to lightly tape this down. I don't want it to shift. Um, and all I'm going to be doing is literally coloring in the stencil with my pencil. Okay? So I'll just go all the way around, color in all the openings, and when that's done, I'm going to uh, activate it with a paintbrush and some water. So I don't know if the white's going to show up as well as I'm envisioning it. Who knows, but that's what I'm choosing to do for this prompt. So let me color this in and possibly another one. And before I paint, you know, use the water, I'll show you what we got. Okay, guys, I finished coloring this one in. And before I go on, I just want to see how this is going to work out because honestly, I don't have a lot of high hope for this. I look how faint that is. I guess you can see it okay. Um, the pencil was definitely skimming right over the uh, decoupage and the oil pen, so I don't know. Uh, if I really want to continue making more. But let's see how this activates. I might change my mind. And again, it's a watercolor, um, you know, so it's not going to be permanent. But uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm having a hard time even seeing it to activate it. But uh, I'm going to say that's a fail. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I try something else? It's really not even coming through. Let me try a bigger brush. Yeah. Oh, what do you guys think? Should I do some sp like sprays? I don't not want to do the prompt, but... That was a lot of work for that mandala. Um, hmm. Well, you know what? I'm going to finish what I started. Let me activate this a little to at least get it on here. And then maybe we'll go over it with some of my um, delusion sprays. Is that considered a watercolor spray? They are water soluble. Oh, I'm not happy with that at all. What do you guys think? Sometimes it just doesn't work out. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I mean, I spent a lot of time 
coloring in all the detail of this stencil and you, you can't even see it. Not that all our prompts are seen because we cover up a lot of them, but I'm just not happy with the... I'm just not happy with it. So maybe... Um, I'm going to persevere here. I'll let this dry and then I'm going to come back and I think I have some white spray. Mm, but let's see. I, I want to use a watercolor so I'm not giving up yet. I'll be right back. Okay, let me tell you what I decided to do. I've taped the stencil down as you can see. I really want to follow the prompt and use a water-based spray, but I know that if I use this on top of the decoupage that it's just going to beat up. Um, these need to be used like on a porous surface. So I'm going to kind of bend the prompt a little bit and make it work, and I encourage you guys to do the same whenever you run into a little bit of a roadblock. And I'm going to use this DecoArt Media Shimmer Mister in turquoise through the stencil. Again, this is not a watercolor, although it's a watery color. Um, it's an acrylic-based uh, mister, but I'm at this point, let's just carry on. So I'm going to spray it down, and we'll see what we get. I'm going to go with the other mandala here, and I blocked off the elephant. And you probably won't really notice this so much through the um, other colors and things that are going on, but if I like it, I'll go down and do one in this bottom corner here. Well, let's see what we have. Let me just press it on this side. Yeah, I'm underwhelmed. I've really been trying to uh, work with this prompt here. It's pretty. Um, I like the the color. <laughs> I like the blue on the blue. Let me just wipe this off. So when that dries a little bit, I'm going to do another down in this corner here. And maybe a smaller one up here we'll see I don't know I'm really this prompt has been not my favorite and we only have two left after this so I'm gonna let this dry when I decide what I'm gonna do I'll come back and show you and then we can move on okay guys it is what it is as you can tell, I'm a little underwhelmed here, um, and I'm wondering, we have two prompts left, and, you know, this is a wonderful background, but it doesn't really look like a completed journal page, whatever that means. So, hopefully, uh, we'll have something in these next two cards here. So, let's hope for a focal image of some kind. Draw something. Freehand sketch or trace. Well, that could become a focal image. Maybe I'll do some kind of a silhouette. Um, yeah, that's it. Right? Black would show up against <laughs> this blue. Uh, yeah, so I'm probably going to get some mixed media paper and a pencil and sketch something out and then wind up coloring it black with some kind of a marker and then we'll cut it out and adhere it to the page just because well because we have the prompt and because again I'm concerned that there's no concern here it is what it is okay let me stop talking and gather some supplies and I'll meet you back here when I decide what I want to do Okay guys, I had a hard time deciding what I wanted to draw, and I think I've decided on, I'll just show you, I've just started to sketch it out. I'm going to do this in a black silhouette, 
so it's like a girl under a tree flying a kite and this was kind of inspired by the Amazon Kindle image of a silhouette of someone reading a book under a tree so I don't know I may cut out the kite separately and add it maybe with a real string but this is what I'm thinking of and doing I'm gonna commit to it now I'm using a piece of Canson mixed media paper and just a regular graphite pencil um, so when I finish drawing it I will be uh, coloring it in with this black sharpie and then we're gonna cut it out and put it on the page uh, it is what it is so I'll see you back here when all that's done okay guys I wanted to give you an update I'm just starting to color things in with the sharpie now um, you know I had to sneak some mushrooms in there and I think I'm going to have her instead of the kite I'm gonna have her fly a dragonfly um, I don't know I just thought that would be cute so I'm gonna continue filling in with the black and then cut it out and like I said I'll probably use some Aileen's tacky glue or something to put it down and I think I will use a real piece of string or wire um, yeah so I'll see you back here when that's done okay I thought I'd give you an update before I glue this down um, it'd be easier for me to show you on a white background this is where we're at and I spent probably way too much time making little cutouts in the tree branches I used an exacto knife and the sharpie was looking too streaky for me so I just used some of my another deco art media mister in carbon black and went over it and I also cut out um, a little dragonfly which I still haven't figured out how we're gonna attach him but I'm pretty happy with it and I'm just going to use uh, Aileen's tacky glue and let's see I have this I'm not sure if it's going to be the best thing for it but the paper is kind of thick so I can't really use like a glue stick and I don't want to come in with more decoupage because it's going to reactivate all the blue underneath now it looks pretty dark here on the camera it's not quite this dark uh, in the real world but what I may do is um, after I glue it down like I'll use the Aileen's on the back of this and then I'll take a piece of wax paper over the top and a little like a spatula and glue it down that way and that way I'm not going to be ripping the paper and getting the glue everywhere but if it doesn't pop enough when I have it down I may go around and outline with a white signal pen uh, which I'll show you when I do that so that's where we're at I'm gonna glue it down and when I come back that part will be done okay I've got this nice and glued down now and I wanted to show you what I'm thinking of doing for the dragonfly um, I've cut out two of these and I'm going to take some wire and this is just cheap aluminum wire I have no idea where I got it and I've started to coil it on the bottom nothing fancy I just wanted a little base and I'm going to make a hole from the back side of the page through where the hand is and I'm going to feed the wire up from the back and I'll just secure that coil on the back with a piece of um, masking tape or duct tape or something so that'll be anchored from the back and then the wire I'm going to attach the dragonfly to somehow just probably with the Aileen's 
and I'm going to leave it so it's kind of, you know, 3D and flying up there. Um, I don't know how long that will last in the journal, but it's not going to get a lot of wear and tear, and it's just a thought. So that's what I'm planning on doing, and I'll come back and show you when that's done. So much for draw something, right? I got a little carried away. Be right back. I thought I'd show you how I'm going to feed the wire through. So I just poked a small hole right through her hand here. And you can see it on the back. And I have our wire with the coil. And I'm just going to feed it through. And this will lay flat. Once I've, you know, I'm going to play with the wire on the front when I'm done. But when I'm happy with it, I'm just going to take a piece of tape and put it over. And I may reinforce that a few times. And like I said, it's not going to get a lot of wear and tear. Um, you could put a piece of, um, a little bit of glue. Actually, I probably should have done that, but I didn't. Um, and I'll reinforce that and then, like I said, with the dragonfly, I'm going to somehow attach it again with the glue and we'll arrange the wire so you can see it. Alright? See you in a minute. Okay guys, what do you think? I think it looks cute. Um, I'm happy with the flying dragonfly, and I think it should hold up okay. I mean, I reinforced the tape in the back, and I just like it. So I did go around and highlight a little bit with my uh, white signal pen, and I also um, went around with the Sharpie where I thought it needed it, but yeah. Let's move on to our final prompt and see what we have here. So, doodle or draw random shapes. Well, random is my favorite word. Doodle or draw random shapes. You know, how about some <laughs> random, like stars maybe? Um, and a crescent moon or a full moon. Yeah, that sounds good. I don't know what else to do. So I'm going to use this pen again. That's not a bad way to end it. I was hoping for a border, but that's just me. Um, I could draw a border of random shapes, but I'm not going to get too hung up with it. But let's just draw teeny tiny little stars and I'll also do some just random dots come on pen there we go um, yeah pepper our night sky here what do you think? That's not a bad idea. And I guess we can do to open crescent. And I'll color that in. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll fill up the sky uh, randomly, and then that's going to be it, you guys. I might put a coat of sealer on this, some kind of acrylic sealer, maybe a gloss or matte. I'm not sure. Um, but after that, when everything's all dry and I'm done, I'll come back and I'll show you, and we're going to call it finished. So let me, let me put some stars down. Okay guys, I did go over this with some deco art 
acrylic sealer um, and gloss I decided and I let it dry overnight and I'm filming now on my phone so you can really get an idea of the true color of the blues in the background and I think it came out really cute um, yeah what do you think <laughs> please give me a thumbs up if you like this video I would love love for you to join us over at the Dyson deal Facebook group I post all the prompts each month. You guys can play along. Like I said, interpret them how you wish. I'll put all the links to all the supplies I used in this video, as well as links to Kyla Givehan's mixed media deck. And I look forward to seeing you guys each month. If you do a Dyson Deal page, please tag me so I can come check it out. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.